Corina Vitia, and I'm one of the first semester general chemistry peer leaders at the University of Texas at El Paso. Hi, my name is Anin Martinez, and I am a second semester general chemistry peer leader at the University of Texas at El Paso, where I am currently seeking a second bachelor's in microbiology. Hello, my name is Marianne Marin, and I am a student at the University of Texas at El Paso, or UTEP, where I am currently completing my undergraduate studies in biology. Previously, I had worked as a peer leader in our first semester general chemistry program for a year and a half. Peer-led T-learning, or PLTL, is an educational model that seeks to foster student learning through peer-assisted sessions. It has a rich history, but it was most recently formalized in 2011 when practitioners of the model met to form the Peer-led Team Learning International Society, or PLTLIS. Since then, PLTLIS has upheld its mission by supportive institutions and practitioners through various means, including, but not limited to, holding annual conferences and supporting the development and dissemination of peer-led team learning techniques. Much like supplemental instruction, peer-led team learning is a method that seeks to improve student learning outcomes through interactive workshops facilitated by a student leader. This student leader, or peer leader as we call them, is an undergraduate student who has previously excelled in the course and has been trained to guide workshop sessions. Rather than acting as a teacher, the peer leader adopts the mantle of a guide whom serves to support learners in mastering course content. However, there are a number of differences between SI and peer-led team learning. While PLTL programs across various institutions adhere to the same basic principles of team-based collaborative learning, each program shapes their own approach. SI programs also share the same basic principles, but adopt a more standardized approach overall. At our institution, PLTL workshops have been implemented for over 20 years in the traditionally difficult first-year general chemistry courses. Unlike the voluntary sessions in SI, these workshops are a mandatory component of the course. Once a week, peer leaders meet with a fixed cohort of students for two-hour sessions where they share effective study strategies, develop new practice problems, create exam reviews, and help students master that week, week's content. Additional one-on-one -on -one help can also be provided at weekly peer leader office hours if needed. Ideally, workshop facilitation involves a diverse array of collaborative and team-based approaches that cater to a workshop's unique needs, as determined by a peer leader's frequent interactions with their students. Ultimately, the goal is both to assist students in mastering course content and in developing appropriate study techniques that will help them succeed in future courses. And this too is a collaborative effort. At UTEP, peer leaders are expected to attend a one-hour meeting twice a week with faculty at the Department of Chemistry to outline weekly goals and expectations. This time also allows peer leaders to collaborate to solve common issues, exchange ideas, and develop novel activities. Across the years, peer leaders at various institutions have developed novel approaches to small group learning, a joint effort by peer leaders and faculty at the University of Texas at El Paso and the Peer-Led Team Learning International Society, led to a development of the work Facilitating Team-Based Learning, a Peer Leader's Guide to Leading Learning Activities. This resource provides peer leaders information on their role as facilitators, in addition to various team-based learning activities that could be employed in their workshops. This text, distributed by PLTLIS, acts as a general guide with techniques that can be applied to various disciplines. Therefore, faculty seeking to establish their own PLTL programs or those wishing to empower their peer leaders could use this guide as an additional resource. Our institution has also guided efforts to translate the guide, along with other resources, into Spanish. UTEP is located in the city of El Paso, Texas, along the U.S.-Mexico border. Our campus is here and our sister city of Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua is there. So we're real close to one another and this relationship transcends everything um, on our campus from student culture to academia. And the translated guide allows institutions located in Spanish speaking regions, along with those located in binational or multinational communities like us to adopt and implement peer assisted learning techniques. The idea for the facilitation guide was first conceived by a peer leader at the University of Texas of El Paso, Andrea McWilliams. During her time as a peer leader, Andrea noticed that advocates of PLTO had come up with countless activities and ideas throughout the years that made team learning more meaningful and efficient. 
She decided that her program needed a single resource guide that housed these ver various team-based learning techniques. So Andrea worked with Dr. James Beckbar, Dr. A.E. Dreyfus, and fellow peer leaders on compelling activities that had been previously developed. Her hope is that the guide will be continuously expanded and edited. To her, the guide is meant to be a dynamic hub for innovative team-based approaches to learning. In its original form, the guide's activities were distinguished by the number of smiley faces they carried. Those assigned one smiley face were activities better suited for new groups, where teamwork had not yet been fully established. Activities could carry up to four faces, with a greater number of smileys indicating a greater degree of team building needed to incorporate the technique into workshop. Dr. Dreyfus noticed that this approach resembled psychologist Bruce Tugman's four stages of group development. Each of these stages corresponds to a point on the journey towards a fully formed operational group. The first stage, forming, involves team members getting to know each other, setting goals, establishing rules, and determining their joint dynamic. This stage is like an orientation in which group members look to a leader for guidance. The second stage, storming, involves group conflict. It is during this stage that team members begin to push boundaries and challenge authority. Despite progressing, groups may return to this or any other stage throughout their development. It is not always a linear process, so an activity, like a game, may sometimes be needed to reform the group's energy. If the group survives this stage, storming gives way to the third, norming. It is here that the group begins to define normality. A clear sense of purpose and well-established individual roles and responsibilities should become clearer as these issues are resolved. Ideally, the group should also come together and feel comfortable with one another. The last stage, performing, occurs once the group begins to function at its full potential. With Dr. Dreyfus's guidance, the workbook adopted a structure inspired by these ideals. Each section in the facilitation guide corresponds to one of Tuckman's stages of group development. All peer leaders go through a week-long training prior to the start of a new term during which they practice group-based learning activities as well as the technical skills required to evaluate workshop students and contribute to the overall course grade. Although the efforts of experienced peer leaders to pass down first-hand knowledge and support to first-time peer leaders are thorough, the facilitation guide provides a constant reference for peer leaders to resort to when they require assistance to personalize their own workshops. The first meeting of every workshop is monumental in establishing the learning environment for the remainder of the term but it is also the most nerve-wracking for the peer leader in charge of the group. How do I set up my first workshop? How do I support my students so that they are successful in the course? How do I jumpstart connections amongst my students to make a fun and safe learning environment? How do I engage my students to take an active part in their own education? And these are all questions that peer leaders ask themselves throughout their experience working with fellow students. The facilitation guide is full of tailored group activities and communication techniques to answer these questions. The facilitation guide benefits all peer leaders so that they may become successful facilitators by providing insightful strategies to manage challenging scenarios in a workshop environment. The facilitation guide provides tips from previous peer leaders with hands-on experience in such a circumstance, as well as visual aids, potential pitfalls, and reflections for over 45 collaborative learning activities and process techniques to strengthen the skills required to be a successful leader. Constant resources in the facilitation guide. The physical guide is divided into five parts. The first section focuses on strategies to prepare a workshop and what the role of the peer leader is. Section two is geared towards forming a successful group of learners with techniques and activities that focus on establishing a positive learning environment. 
Section 3 contains tips to direct collaborative activities that are ideal for groups that have already had the opportunity to get to know each other. Section 4 is about facilitating a team of learners where the overall expectations of the team have been raised due to their strong teamwork. Finally, Section 5 details competitive games designed to assess the progress and understanding of students who are very comfortable with each other and can handle intense competition. The importance of translating this facilitation guide is to extend the peer-led team learning model to Spanish-speaking institutions and the Spanish-speaking community as a whole. The El Paso Juarez Borderplex is home to a binational community with a strong Hispanic heritage. Indeed, 80% of the student population at UTEP are identified as Hispanic or Latino, and a good amount of these people come from the Mexican side of the border. Thus, there is some sort of personal aspect to, the, to this translation. This facilitation guide is meant to, the, to guide the peer leader for the purpose of articulating their thoughts and convey information to the students. A translation into Spanish has the added perk of allowing the peer leader to do this in another language and therefore connect better with the students who are struggling with the language barrier rather than the content itself, thus articulating ideas in a matter that, that is much easier to understand. Furthermore, in translating the facilitation guide into Spanish, we hope to set a precedent for more multinational or otherwise diverse communities so that more translations of this facilitation guide can be used to bring the peer-led team learning model to more institutions across the world. Translating peer leading material into Spanish has long been a goal of PLTLIS, and in fact, discussions on the matter date back to as early as 2009, but this project was shelved for many years. It wasn't until a group of individuals associated with PLTLIS began discussions with the University of Mexico to bring the PLTL model to their institution that the project was brought back into the forefront of PLTLIS's goals. Ultimately, Translation of the guide was a concerted effort between peer leaders and faculty at multiple institutions and the peer-led team learning international society. The initial effort was guided by myself and three other peer leaders at UTEP. We divided the guide into four equal sections and translated it. Afterwards, one of the involved peer leaders and I edited the guide for readability and consistency. At this stage of the process, we found it prudent to standardize terms that did not have a universal direct translation but would be frequently used throughout the guide. This required finding a balance between maintaining the meaning and readability of such terms and simply ensuring that the translation felt right. For example, the term peer leader gave us much trouble. Its direct translation would be something akin to leader de compañeros or leader of peers. Although this term maintained the direct meaning of the word, to us, it didn't quite feel natural. After brainstorming, we came up with alternate translations, such as leader de taller or leader de grupo, which mean workshop leader and group leader, respectively. These terms conveyed the meaning conceptually and also felt more readable to us, the native Spanish speakers. Other translation efforts for peer-led team learning and supplemental instruction are likely to face similar issues in which the strict fidelity of translation must be sacrificed in order to maintain coherence or describe conceptual ideas in the new language. For us, standardizing these terms early in the process helped facilitate future steps. This measure also provides a good standard for us to use when translating future works. As SI already has a strong international influence, many of its identifying terms have likely already found their accepted translation, but this is still something good to keep in mind when considering future projects. Once we, the peer leaders, had refined our initial draft, secondary edits were made by a then postdoc also involved in the project, Dr. Daniel Carbajal. Refinements and quality control edits were completed by Dr. Anna Fryman from Northeastern Illinois University. For her part, Dr. Fryman helped clarify the text. She replaced verbiage that was too literal with more conceptual descriptions of the activities. The initial translation was done by peer leaders who, like myself, have lived in the border region their entire lives. This fact influenced the language we used to translate the guide. We had unknowingly used terms that were unique to our region. 
Similarly, Dr. Carbajal grew up and completed his undergraduate studies in the same northern Mexican state of Chihuahua that Ciudad Juarez is situated in. Therefore, our slang likely did not appear out of place to him. However, Dr. Freeman is originally from Uruguay and was able to pick up on these terms. For example, in our draft, we translated the word car to carro. If these words look similar, it's because they are. The term was derived from the English word. It is frequently used throughout northern Mexico, but not so much further south. Dr. Freiman changed such words to their more technical synonyms to make the translation universal across most Spanish-speaking regions. Ultimately, this works assembly has the potential to provide peer leaders with an additional resource that they can consult as needed. At our institution, most peer leaders deliver two workshop sessions a week to two different cohorts of students. The need to adjust activities to fit the unique needs and strengths of different workshops is an issue that may arise. At times, different workshops call for wholly different approaches. You may have a set of students who are very receptive to interactive game-like activities, while your other workshop responds best to pair and think-share-like activities. Having a text like the facilitation guide allows peer leaders access to many activities so that they may plan their sessions to better suit the needs of their students. Essentially, the guide facilitates access to team-based learning strategies. We're able to provide our peer leaders with a diverse array of approaches to meet the equally diverse groups of students they will interact with. In addition, Future editions of the guide provide an opportunity for peer leaders to contribute new activities and be recognized for that effort. In the future, we hope to continue to translate additional peer-led team learning material and coordinate to bring the PLTL model to other institutions. These two goals partly go hand in hand. As previously mentioned, PLTLIS was in talks with the National Autonomous University of Mexico to bring the PLTL model to their institution. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing pandemic, progress on this front has been delayed, but we hope to advance this project in the future. If the facilitation guide in Spanish serves as a good resource for other programs, we hope to translate some of the other workshop material owned by PLTLIS. These materials will soon be available through shop.pltlis.org and additional information on the PLTL model can also be found at pltlis.org. Ultimately, all of our workshop materials are meant to be dynamic. With that in mind, we hope to continue to improve upon the guide through the joint effort between our peer leaders and the faculty that support them.